certain strikes or something like that can actually impact negatively your account quality and the lower it goes the higher your chance of your asset getting restricted guys thanks for joining the call i appreciate you hopping on today thanks hey. neil thanks for having uh, us nice. All right. So Aerosol, give us that again, man. Back back to where you were. What were you yeah. just talking about in terms of like value of the e com and, and pay traffic world? Sure, sure. So one very important thing, uh, you know, if you're in e com, if you're running paid ads, um, you know, whether it's e com or affiliate or whatever it is, is that you need to make sure that you diversify your setup, you diversify your assets. So specifically about Facebook, which is now probably the main channel. Uh, one mistake we see a lot is people pretty much putting all of their eggs in one basket. So let's say you have a business manager, uh, you know, and then having your, your business manager own the ad account, own the pixel and own the page, uh, which you're using to advertise. This is quite risky because if something gets blocked, if the, usually the business manager that runs the ads is the one that gets blocked. And if that goes down and that's the business manager that owns the ad account and owns the pixel as well, now you lost all the pixel data and you lost everything. You got to start from scratch. Um, so especially in people who are spending a lot of money and then you're pretty much uh, jeopardizing your whole operation. You have to start from scratch and, you know, yep. it's obviously a lot of money lost. So what yep. we would suggest is to have a very diversified, uh, diversified setup. So we would say at least two to three business managers, uh, the business manager that runs the ads. So that business manager you use to run the ads should never be the business manager that actually owns the assets, you know, so you should have you know what for example one business manager that only owns the pixel yeah. that you're using but it never runs the ads another one where for example you just use to create the page for example uh, and the ad account let's say and then a third business manager which you only use to run the ads and then you share the assets into the business manager that actually runs the ads that's um, an ideal setup which we would suggest and of course the more business managers the better and of course on each business manager you keep different admins ideally you know close friends or family members ideally people that have never even ran ads in their life just keep it as diversified as possible just in case you get your personal profile blocked for whatever reason and you don't even have to be doing some black hat stuff for this to happen like so many people they're running completely white hats completely on policy stuff and then uh, you know, they just get blocks with business managers, uh, ad accounts. I'll raise profiles. my hand on that because that happened exactly yeah. to me. Um, I had an account, we exactly. had $3 million to spend in that account. And then instead of just blocking the individual, uh, ad accounts, they just blocked my personal profile and pff, wiped everything out in one swell. Like I got really exactly. smart about this cause they were banned in advertising accounts a few years ago. Right. And then they wouldn't mess with your profile per se. So you could open additional accounts or business managers. And then someone got smart and just said, hey, what if we just ban the personal account that's attached to that and wipe the whole thing out? Like some yeah. some team meeting exactly. somewhere inside of Facebook or somebody was like, that's genius. So they yeah, just go in I and know. destroy your personal account. And that happened to me, a business Facebook account that had all that attached to it. And I made that yeah. classic mistake of having the one business manager own the pixels and the pages and everything. And just like you said, uh, I fell victim to that. So this yeah, is a good... Exactly. Uh, this is a good learning lesson that hopefully those who are on this call will take uh, account of what you just said and not follow my path down that. Um, we don't run a lot of Facebook traffic right now anyways. Um, and we were running that for more of the e-com stuff in the past when we had a mm -hmm. Shopify store. Um, so where are you seeing the focus now in terms of, um, you know, if I'm playing white hat or I'm playing black hat, but I'm still running into the same problems. Um, what is the like number one, two and three things I should consider if I'm if I'm in risk right now and what does risk look like to me? Yeah, I mean, so the first thing is, you know, as I just mentioned, make sure that is as, as diversified as possible. Uh, so for example, the just to continue that previous point, just the business manager that runs the ads, let's say that business manager goes down and gets restricted. Uh, what you can then do is just disassociate that <coughs> business manager from the other business managers. And then you can just get another business manager uh, from like a family member or a friend. You can just have them create a business manager and make you as right. an admin. And then you just associate the assets again. So that's uh, the first thing. Keep everything decentralized. That's what I did um, with my wife. <laughs> I use my wife's Perfect. profile exactly. to open a new business manager and got access. Yeah. And she's annoyed because she keeps getting all these status updates. And it's like, yeah. Why? what's happening with my email filling up with all these <laughs> status yeah. updates? Yeah. Like, we have some clients using their grandmother's profile. You know, grandma's it's crazy. It gets wild, you know. You just have to keep exhausting your list until finally you run out. <laughs> so you run out, and then you have yeah. to call you guys to get some get some new accounts, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I would say similar as well. Another thing I would add on to that is I actually haven't done this recently, but up until around six months ago, uh, what you can do is, cause right now, if you have a, a disabled business manager and then that's obviously linked to your profile, it puts all of your other assets at risk. So what you could do before I need to check if you can still do it, but up until six months ago is working is you can actually pass off a disabled business manager to someone else. Um, so what you do is you just make someone else admin. So like, let's say a, like a, a friend that is never going to run Facebook ads, it's not going to impact them at all. You just make them an admin and then you just, then you can just remove yourself as an admin. So you can just pass off a disabled business manager to someone else. So you have a completely clean setup and then you just get another business manager from, from, you know, another friend. So I've done that multiple times. I've passed off my biz, a business I manager see. to my grandma and then I got a business manager from my other grandma. <laughs> so just like <laughs> making sure you have the, the most clean setup possible. That's, that's one very important thing. So clean setup, no disabled assets, fully decentralized, uh, multiple admins that you trust on each business manager. This is probably the most important thing you can do uh, in this day and age uh, in terms of keeping everything safe. Uh, I guess another addition to that is if you are moving around a lot, I mean, maybe it's not relevant for everyone. Some people, they travel around between different countries a lot. That yeah. can also flag the Facebook algorithm. So um, what we would suggest is just keep a VPN running at all times. Uh, just you, There's VPN programs where it's like they just load up uh, right when you start the computer. Uh, and then you just consistently use the same uh, IP address to be accessing Facebook. And that minimizes the risk of these kind of blocks happening as well. Okay. Well, that's great stuff and it is good minimizing risk. And I understand it's all within compliance um, to be able to hand those off and you're staying within the terms of service. So uh, yeah, that of course, it doesn't address any particular issues. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What are some of the things that would cause that to, to go down? Like I, I don't even know a hundred percent why they took mine offline. Um, it was, it's been very hard for anybody to explain uh, in the, you know, chat bot world of support for Facebook, uh, when you don't have an account rep that really knows what's going on. I met a bunch of account reps who didn't know more than I did about the system. Uh, what are some of the things that'll get you cut? What are some of the things somebody might do today? Who's listening to this and running Facebook ads that they can say, you know, not just risk management, but what are the things I'm doing that might trigger, uh, that to kick off? Um, Eric, you want to take that as well? Sure. So, I mean, the short answer is, um, of course, if you are not following policy, of course, that's the thing. But even if, you know, many times people are following policy and it still happens. So pretty much the Facebook algorithm is not perfect. It's glitchy a lot of times. Um, you know, of course, they don't, they don't have like millions of people working for them, constantly checking everything. So a lot, for the most part, a lot of times it's just an algorithm and it just randomly sees some certain triggers and it starts blocking uh, accounts. So to be honest, there's not like a 100% bulletproof system to make sure it doesn't happen to you. It's kind of like whack-a-mole. It can happen to like many people, even if you're totally white hat. Um, you know, the things you can do to minimize the risk besides what we just talked about earlier is, for example, even small things like uh, when you're launching ads, let's say you're launching some new creatives, um, you know, you can, you, instead of launching, let's say five, six new creatives at a time it, to get them in review with the Facebook algorithm, um, instead of having all of them at the same time, you can do, you should do like one or two, uh, one by one. So then get one review, one creative approved. Then, then after it's approved, get like the next two approved and so forth. Because if for whatever reason, a few of them don't get approved and then you have multiple creatives not get approved at the same time that can right. trigger, uh, the Facebook algorithm and that can actually get the whole account disabled, which then can put uh, risk on your other assets. So, so don't go in and like set up a duplicate of 10 when you haven't officially got one of them approved yet. Cause you may yeah. get all 10 disapproved yeah. and all of a sudden you got 10 strikes on your account, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And even if they're totally, uh, you know, compliant, but for whatever reason, sometimes, you, as you know, sometimes you have a totally compliant ad, but the algorithm just randomly decides that it's, you know, disapproved right. and you need to appeal. Right? Right. We, we, we've seen it. Um, sorry, Ari. Uh, yeah. We've seen it a lot where, <clears throat> you know, a lot of our clients are super excited. They want to test a new product and they've seen, you know, a bunch of different creatives and they want to launch them all at once. They want to just do it all in once. Um, and they launch like 15 ads and it's all in review. And all it takes is for one of those creatives that's maybe in five or six ad sets all to like get rejected. And what yeah. that does is it impacts your account quality. Now, um, there's something that most people don't know, but we've gotten this information from our insiders, which is that every single asset has an account quality. Now on the pages, everyone knows that, but the ad accounts, the BMs, that also has an account quality. And the more rejections you have, the more failed billings you have, um, you know, certain strikes or something like that it can actually impact negatively your account quality. And the lower it goes, the higher your chance of your asset getting restricted. So 
Ari made a very valid point, which is that you might be totally fine, everything will be good, but because you've now launched 20 ads and they're all in review, uh, number one, it looks, looks like a high risk, um, you know, for the algorithm, it looks like a high risk. Like, why is this person launching so many ads front loading at once when there's no spending history? So that can potentially cause uh, an issue. But number two is that, OK, that creative may have something in there, maybe an excessive skin or a bit of you know, something with health and, re- uh, you know, something with beauty that just is against policy. And that one rejection will then go again with the others, a domino effect. And then you have like eight or nine red errors, uh, you know, rejected. The account quality goes to sh- very low, and it'll get rejected, and the account will actually go down. Then right, so how the do I issue. Set up that account? Go ahead. Sorry, keep going. Go. I was going to say the issue there then is that you have now an ad account that's gone down. Will probably come back, but because it's summer and because Meta's support is super slow, especially during summer, probably take a week or two. So you're out of action. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So following that train of thought, how do I, if I'm new to this or I'm wanting to get started with it, what what is the uh, simple way for me to, you know, personal account, business account, do I set up with an LLC? What's your recommendation like to get things structured correctly from the very beginning? I mean, I wouldn't, uh, regarding LLC and setup, I, I wouldn't say that's, you know, entirely necessary. If you want to verify your BM, uh, because a verified BM is a strong BM, um, you know, yeah. you've already proven to Facebook that, okay, you're a legitimate business, that's fair. But you don't need it necessarily. You can also just advertise with a personal profile, with just a normal BM that's maybe has a spending limit. So here's the other thing, you know, um, and we'll get into what we provide and how we like help the industry. But there's certain issues with new accounts. Let's say, you know, Neil, you decide to open a new account from, you know, a cousin of yours tomorrow. Okay, you'll make a new BM, but you'll have a spending limit. You'll have to warm up the account. You might have $10 a day, 25 for like a week, and then 50 and egg is slowly, you know, compounding. But during that time, you're not allowed to scale. And that BM may not be verified, so it will have some restrictions, like you can only make, be, make one ad account initially. And then after you have some spending, you might be able to make three and then five. It's capped at that, okay? So, you know, you don't need to have uh, all the LLC details in short, but you can get started with just a normal one. Um, and I'll kind of segue into what we provide and how we kind of limit and solve these all, all these issues is that we, Orange Trail, our agency, we have, you know, direct uh, contracts and agreements with ASPs from Facebook, Google, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter. And we have these high tier agency ad accounts, which are kind of like, um, they're pre-vetted accounts, screen status accounts directly from all these platforms. They're badly kept secret because some people know about them, but they're not really supposed to because they're meant for the high spenders, high potential clients. And we managed to get an agreement in place with, you know, these platform ASPs, which makes us allow, allows us to provide them to advertisers. Um, now these accounts have uh, numerous benefits. They don't get banned as easily because they're pre-vetted. They're, they're kind of green status. Um, they can be whitelisted for certain verticals like, you know, CBD, THC, like totally white hat. We don't, we never go black. We're not allowed to because of our reps. Um, they don't have spending limits. So uh, as I mentioned, a new account will have this warm up period with us. You don't, you can literally go from zero to hundred K a day if you want over overnight. Um, we have direct line access to reps. You know, as I mentioned, the support time is really slow, especially during summer. But with us, you can actually get an answer from a direct rep uh, within 24 hours. So there's numerous benefits of what we do and what we provide. And it's all just kind of combating all the issues and the mess that we see from standard accounts in the industry. Good. No, it's a great summary. I appreciate that. So if somebody wants to uh, get started with your services, are they looking at, um, like, is there a startup fee? Is there a monthly fee? How do you kind of help people move forward at what cost? Yeah, um, so our business model is quite simple. We will provide you the advertising infrastructure, and uh, in return, we'll either have a monthly fee based on your ad spend. So if you're if you're a low spender, because we have some that are like below fifteen thousand per month, um, for us that's a low spender. Then we'll just charge you a flat uh, five hundred dollars per month, and what that includes is unlimited ad accounts. You can have as much support as you want. You have twenty four five support, so you'll have account managers from our team in every time zone in U.S., in Europe, in Asia. So we have like around the clock support and you get unlimited ad accounts for this. Um, if you go above 15K, then what we do is we don't charge a monthly fee, we just take a small percentage of your ad spend, which is 3.5%. Now, we have the fastest turnaround times in the industry, so within a few hours, we can get your account open, topped up, ready to advertise. And the main reason clients come to us is, and we have some huge brands that are spending millions per month. The main reason they come to us is, first of all, they don't wanna rely on standard accounts for their multi-million dollar business, and then it just goes down, you know, over, over nothing. Um, but the second reason is just stability. Like they can advertise with ease, with stability, and they don't have to, you know, 
uh, get in touch with support, wait a week or two, and uh-huh. basically have no traffic. Because unfortunately, a lot of lazy marketers are in this industry and they're relying on one traffic source, like mainly Facebook. And when that goes down, they have no traffic, they have no business. So, you know, what, what, what I normally say is like diversify your traffic streams, have at least, you know, TikTok, Google, you know, multiple. Um, but the re- sad reality is most marketers nowadays are quite lazy. They rely on one. So if that's going to be you, then come to Orange Trail. We'll help you out. <laughs> so how did you, this is kind of a unique situation. How did you guys get in, into this? Like, how did you, did you fall into it? Is it a crime of opportunity? <laughs> was it a genius strategy or yeah. was it an, <laughs> was it just something that said, Hey, look, there's a need. Let's fill it. Like, how did you guys get into this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's one of those things that was born out of just having experience in the industry. Uh, so both Rohan and myself have been in the industry for years now. Uh, so Rohan's had, you know, multiple, you know, multi seven figure brands. Uh, I myself, uh, you know, have a paid ads agency before that where we worked with, you know, large seven and multi eight figure brands. And through that, we were able to get in touch with the right people from, you know, these platforms, which we're working with, uh, make the connections with the right reps with the right people. Uh, and through that, you know, obviously, as, as we established the, these relationships, we were able to to, uh, to establish this business. It's definitely not something you can just, you know, Google, uh, like, hey, how do I do this? It's, you know, it's just three years of being in the industry, making the right relationships. Uh, and that's why uh, we were able to, to establish it. Uh, and of course, we saw a pressing need in the market for it. You know, it's a massive pain point in the market. Uh, and we're like, yeah, let's, uh, let's help solve it. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, if you've got hundreds of thousands in spend or millions in spend, it can be very impactful to your bottom line if all of a sudden you, if that disappears <laughs> from your ability yeah. to operate, right? It's a, it's a critical infrastructure. What are some of the final thoughts? Just, uh, you know, to, if someone's listening today and either they're growing or scaling or they're somewhere, what's some final thoughts you guys might give them just to help them out today? Um, so my, my thoughts would be, first of all, diversify your traffic sources. Never ever rely on one single traffic source because you're at the mercy of that platform. If Facebook has a bad day, you're having a bad day. But if you have Facebook, Google, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever, you have multiple streams and one has a bad day, it's not going to impact your bottom line. Um, you know, don't be a lazy marketer, as I say, diversify. Uh, if you don't want to learn those skills, hire the right people that do. But you need to diversify traffic streams. Um, Second thing I would say is, you know, if you are having these issues, you really need to look at how you can minimize your liability. Because at the end of the day, that's that's core to your business for longevity. If you're a short term dropshipper, you know, maybe don't worry about it. But if you're a serious business person about about your brand, this is something you really need to consider. Very well said, guys. Thank you so much for coming on, sharing some great information. Hopefully those who are listening, who are in the Facebook game, the traffic game, paid media, whether it's TikTok or Facebook, Google, et cetera, have taken some good information away from this today. Thanks Links and stuff will be in the show notes to get connected right. with these wonderful guys. Go look them up online. Guys, I'm honored to have you on the show. Thanks for coming in. Thanks a lot for having us. Cheers.